Hi everyone, we are back here today in the back garden and we're gonna go ahead and share with everyone the window box, how is it doing? It's been about two months since we planted this window box and it's done incredible. Um, I don't see such a long time that has passed by and I just, I cannot believe how much growth the plants have put on. Um, it's been raining a lot too. So I think that's also a big part of, of, um, of how come they've put on so much growth back here. So let's go ahead and start showing you. On this side of the window box, we have white impatience. And this whole area takes morning sun, about two to three hours maybe of sun, and then the whole day shade. And then right here we have more impatience. These are the Rocopoco white double impatience from proven winners and look at that beautiful double bloom it has a little bit of pink in there that is the whole reason why we chose this one i wanted some pink not too crazy pink just something very light and then let's not forget about this little guy down here i haven't seen him in a while that is called a strawberry begonia love the leaves on it but as you can see the impatience took over, which I'm okay with that. And then right here is a tricolor potato vine, which has been one of my favorite potato vines. We're growing it up front too in full sun, um, which what's funny is that how it ended up on this side. Um, if you go back to see the video when we planted this window box, it was on the other side where we planted it, the opposite side of the window box. And it made its way over here because as you see, the plant started growing. Sun did not, um, the sun didn't get on that side for the potato vine to grow. So it just made its way to the back, towards the back and grew, grew in through the plants. And then what we have here that we grew from bulb are the hard and so caladiums. Look at that beautiful color. I have ants right now. Got a little problems with ants back here, guys. And look at those impatience. I just thought it was so pretty to have the caladium foliage with the impatient blooms. Um, down here, it's carex. It's a type of carex grass. And if I'm correct, it's feathers false. I only put one in there. It's done just, I, I love it. It's done good too. Um, what else? Okay, what I'm super, well, there's more impatience over here. And they're always blooming. They're always putting bud. And they started to, um, they, they were super full as well, like the other side. But as you can see, this big begonia here that we're going to talk about right now um, has been covering it up. So that's why it looks a little bit, you know, with less blooms. So this right here, guys, it's just beautiful. This is Pegasus begonia. Wow. Um, we planted two in there. And for the size of this container, I really think that one would have been just great too. So if anybody is looking for a great begonia to grow and maybe in a good size like this for next year, um, this guy right here does amazing. Um, I picked it out because of its veins. If you can see in here in the foliage, the color, pink, reddish, just beautiful in the foliage, so shiny, just gorgeous. I'm planning to take these in pretty soon. Um, the temperatures have been really pretty lately here um, in Virginia. We're going to start seeing temperatures um, drop at night. Um, from 70s to 60s right now. So that means we're gonna start, you know, looking into what plants to start taking indoors. And this is one plant that we certainly wanna have um, to grow as an indoor plant in sight. And we would get more into that. Um, I do know bright light for sure we're gonna have it. We have uh, uh, areas for, for that gorgeous plant. Um, big reason why I wanted to do this video too, um, I wanted to talk about the sense of variant right here that you can barely see. Um, many questions were asked and you know, we try to do that video where we just really put the window box together and I really didn't explain much over the sense of area plants. It's two of them, they're still in there, they're healthy and thriving. And 
oh, almost broke that. And a lot of the questions were, it was really more of a, of, of a concern. Um, many of you were very concerned on whether this plant was going to make it out there, out here, the Sensevarian, and especially in our weather. Um, the thing is, it was a huge experiment. Um, bringing the Sensevaria that we were growing indoors, um, you know, as a house plant was a big experiment for, for us. Um, I had seen a lot of um, gardeners um, where I got inspired um, watching other gar gardeners put these beautiful, amazing combinations with a lot of plants that love and thrive on water, um, planting it with Sensevaria. Um, one of the things we, me and Ambrose went back and forth on was, should we put, leave the sensevarians in the containers that they were in? Or should we had, you know, take them out and plant them directly in the potting soil in here in the, in the window box? We decided to go all out and just go ahead and put the sensevarians in there and see what happens. Um, was it going to thrive? How, how do they do for so many other people, you know, that I've seen um, that have had great success with them? And guys, it's done amazing. Um, watering, how have I been watering this? Uh, most of our garden is on drip. Um, we don't have the window box on drip. It's a shady area back here. Like I said, it only takes maybe two to three hours of sun during the day, morning light at that. Rest of the day, it's all shade, so it really doesn't get dry. Another thing that we went ahead and did was mulch the the window box um, when we first planted um, so it could retain a lot of moisture. At this point, it doesn't matter if it has any any mulch because it's just all the, you know, the growth of the plants is just keeping it so moist in there. I probably water it once a week, guys. Um, we've had temperatures of 90s, um, but it does rain a lot here and that helps out tremendously. Um, and if I do water it, I water the plants directly. I go in with the water hose and water every single plant just directly into the root system. And I don't bother with the sense of area. So I think that's something that has helped a lot. You know, the big, the, the big worry was about the sense of area and you know, how is it going to survive in these conditions where it's so humid out here? It rains a lot. Um, when indoors, it's a house plant that you can literally neglect. With our experience growing this plant indoors, you really have to water it inside. Um, and they just look as lovely as always. So it's been a success growing it. Um, we are going to bring it out and take it back in for, for um, around fall time. Um, I think it's a great time to go ahead and start taking them out, put um, um, planting them in in good nice containers back indoors, maybe something a little bigger because I'm pretty positive that they put some good growth in those roots. And that is one of the greatest things, giving sometimes those indoor plants um, a little vacation, a little break from being indoors so they can get a little bigger, put on more roots and just, they look so pretty taking them back in and, and looking so healthy. So guys, we're going to give you another little look of this area right here. And um, we will be doing another video coming back on this area too, because we're getting ready for fall planting soon. And I'm going to start working on this whole area in front of the window box. And I'm so excited to go ahead and start sharing that with, with you guys. So thank you very much. And have any questions, go ahead and drop them below. And if you want to go ahead and see what we are up to, go ahead and follow us on Instagram and on Facebook, because I just post so much on there, show pictures of all these things, how they're growing from planting all the way through, through the growing season. So thank you very much guys and hope you have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>